All right, Kiss Army. Welcome to the Kiss FAQ podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today. Nothing is into your head. I hope you don't do any damage. This is a Kiss related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Welcome to episode 153 of the Kiss FAQ podcast. Uh, I'm Julian Gill. I am back. I'm still alive. I've been uh, fighting pneumonia. Uh, I've had a death in the family, and we've had uh, high school tryouts for JV soccer to eating up my time. Oh, yeah, and work. Um, so I haven't been able to participate in any of the Kiss FAQ podcast in a while, but I wanted to talk to this guy who's on the screen right <laughs> here, Andy. Uh, Hi. <laughs> it is good to see you again, and of course, you went on the cruise, and every year, or it seems, it's becoming a habit that we talk to you uh, for, <laughs> and get your review of the KISS cruise, because if we don't talk to you, it ain't real. So, <laughs> you know, we talked to you and Joe D'Angelo um, yes. about the gathering you guys hosted in New Orleans. Let's just start there. How was that night, man? Because when you guys were basically telling me about it, it sounded... To use your turn of phrase, wicked awesome, a fantastic thing. And I saw lots of photos from the event with uh, Big John Hart, Lydia Chris, the band, uh, Evan Stanley and his guys, um, the Kiss Tribute Band, and, of course, you and your lovely Kim up on stage. <laughs> and I'll, I'll say it again, congratulations to you Thank both. You. You. What a way to do that is just yeah. awesome. And just looking at those photos that have been posted on Facebook from the event, you know, wow. So tell us about your uh, your gathering before we get into the cruise itself. Yeah, um, uh, uh, people want to know some questions, and uh, I gave out some answers earlier this week or whatever. But uh, I'll, tell, I'll go through as fast as I can because I know it was a long night. It's a lot of work, and if anybody's ever tried to do any of these kind of things, especially with, you know, uh, Two bands, and then Ken Shop, and then we had the comedian, and so I'll go through it quick. Uh, you know, it's our first time in New Orleans. You know, me, my first time in New Orleans. But it's, I mean, I, Joe's not his first time in New Orleans, but our first time in this place called the Howlin' Wolf, trying to set everything up. We didn't know really how it looked, and we got the basically it's one big giant room. And uh, uh, let's face it, we started about 40 minutes late. So there was some uh, technical difficulties. Uh, there were people, the bands were rehearsing, things weren't going all right. So, you know, they were not going to open the doors, you know, I mean, I don't blame them. They're not going to open the doors until they get things right. So uh, it was about a 40-minute delay, and uh, basically I walked out. Uh, we uh, made uh, wristbands, uh, rubber, you know, rubber wristbands, and it said, you know, the gather or whatever. And I started going down the line apologizing, telling everybody as much as I could. This is what this is what's going on. Just hang in. But for the most part, everybody was pretty cool about it. And, uh, you know, we opened the doors, and uh, I was like, holy crap, because uh, according to the figures, there are over 700 people there, Holy and it's sold shit. out. Oh, shit. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> I had to say, I, I, you, know, we got, you know, so when we got on stage, it was like, I look at the crowd, and going, damn. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, the comic, uh, Steve, uh, decided to, uh, uh, you know, he offered to bail out because he, he was there early, and he was watching everything that was going on with the delays. So he uh, agreed. He said, Andy, don't worry about it. I will drop out for you guys so everything can just keep going on a roll. So that's how that got started. So, you know, I apologize to Steve and I apologize to everybody who, you know, was waiting for a comic thing to happen that night. And that's why that didn't happen. Steve uh, graciously bowed out because he knew things were running behind. So, you know, we thank Steve for that. And, um, you know, and also we had Andy DJ noise playing uh, uh, things in between the bands and beginning of the bands and stuff like that. Uh, I have to thank all the special guests because basically it was one big giant room and it was tables like lined up. So they basically got blasted by the bands when they started playing. But I got to tell you, every single guest was off the hook. Nobody complained. They took the tables. They were all happy. I could believe it. Ken, Ken, Ken Kelly's the first one to show up. And he's like, hey, don't worry about it. It's all good. And I'm like, Ken, if, if everybody else is the way you're acting right now, I got to meet tonight because I'll tell you, everyone, all the rest of the guests showed up um, except for uh, James DeBello. Uh, there was a text sent uh, later on that night that, uh, whoop, something that just happened. Oh, my stupid computer. Uh, how did he end? Oh, there we go. Something came up. Um, James DeBello had a, um, uh, I was passing along. I don't know if I should say it or not, but uh, his father passed away. So he was in New York. He was heading down to the party and he got a message that his, uh, his father passed away. So he basically had to fly back home. So that's why James developed, a.k.a. Trip didn't show up. So he wasn't, like, blowing us off. So 
Yes, that's how things go. Also, I have to apologize for the people who brought stuff because we were doing something for the LA SPCA. Um, I yell in the crowd through the microphone because uh, nobody came up to me asking me. They never showed up. Uh, yeah, when I got back home, I had to, uh, basically before I left the Hollow Wolf that night, I sent an email to the guy, the uh, the guy I had talked to, which said nobody showed up. What happened? Where were you guys? And uh, his email of uh, Stu and the guy people at Hall Wolf, can you please come and pick up the stuff either tomorrow or the next night? And then, of course, we were you know gone on the cruise, so I got back. And uh, they did get in touch with them. They did show up a couple of days later. Uh, they did pick up everything. Uh, they, uh, they sent me a letter. I posted a letter, and they did definitely did pick everything up. So I want to make sure everybody out there who brought stuff and donations, because there were a bunch of donations on the table and on the floor and everything. So I wanted to make sure that they did get everything. So it's not like somebody took it all. So, but definitely the right people got the stuff. So it's all set with that. So, and of course, um, uh, let me see. Jeez, uh, Ken Shop. I'm kidding. Yep. <clears throat> Jeez. <sighs> I mean, this is I just try to go really fast because I don't want to do the This is going to be the easiest show for me ever. I just get to sit here and listen, man, and I love it. It's I great. Just, it's, yeah, and of course, uh, you know, uh, Ken Ken Sharp came out and played, and um, and it was he, you know, did an acoustic set of off, you know, so he got some nice. He's got a new CD going to be coming out at the end of the end of the uh, the end of the year, and then he played some other stuff, and you know, it was good to you know, good, kind of nice way to get it started. And then, uh, of course, the dives came on after that, and, you know, the dives kicked some serious. I, I actually think the dives were actually sounded better playing at the hall. And I'm not just trying to fold our own boat on the, on the back, but actually, because the dives had played on the cruise before, last year, too, and then they played on this year. I really think the dives actually played better at the Hall Wolf than they played last year on the cruise. They sounded better. I don't know what he just, they, they really did, they really kicked some serious but. And uh, they took pictures. We had a nice background. They took pictures of everybody after they got finished and everything else. And then Love Gun come on to finish it. And then I don't know if anybody saw some I of the videos. I saw some of the videos and the pictures of Love Gun. And yeah. they looked like they rocked the joint and blew the roof Yeah, we, you know, I mean, uh, it is what it is. You know, they had some technical, they even said they had some technical difficulties for the night and stuff. Hey, what do you want? And, you know, and then, of course, we were getting up there, you know, we were throwing stuff out to the crowd. We had the necklaces throwing out to the crowd. We were trying to give one per person. And we had picks out there. And then we had cups. Actually, if you bought a drink, you were supposed to get a uh, 16-ounce cups. Basically, the bar left them on a thing, so you could have just grabbed them one minute. It didn't matter. And then, uh, actually, we had an extra 1,000 12-inch cups that we went off stage and we're like... I mean, it was like a you know, shower, you know, sprinkler throwing. It was pretty crazy picks, you know, rubber bands. And it's a quite, you know, so, and of course, you know, a lot of thank yous to everybody. You know, uh, <clears throat> Jake Johnson was there, like I said, Ken Kelly, the Love Gun guys are selling stuff. Uh, Lydia was there, Big John Hart. <clears throat> Uh, the uh, people that were selling uh, Lynn Goldsmith uh, books, she, they came, they were selling books. Uh, and also Lynn had uh, 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 made like, about this big, like a little inch card. She had sent a signature, they would crack the book open a little, and they slide it in for everybody who bought a book. So that was pretty cool. And then, of course, Tom Philly, you know, the people that signed up to get Bill at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, he was there. I mean, for, the, for everything, you know, for the little glitches that went down, you know, I think it went really well off. And for ten bucks, man, you couldn't beat the damn thing for ten bucks. I mean, you know, and it's kind of funny. Uh, I have to say thank you to a lot of people that came to Kim and I, and even Joe on the cruise, and basically said, "Man, that was awesome, this and that." But you know, there's always a couple people that <clears throat> schmucks man, that come up to us. I mean, literally come up to us on the cruise, and say, "Hey, you know, that sucked." I'm like, "Really?" And, you know, even Kim's like, "Really? It was ten bucks, dude. Move on." You know, don't like it? You shouldn't have gone. Whatever. Wait, wait. <laughs> it sucked for ten bucks. All that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're, you're, you know, your your expectations uh, unrealistic, dude. Who said it sucked? Uh, yeah. And uh, maybe you need to take a uh, a happy pill. Have a soda. Yeah, hey, more than a soda. And I'll tell you. And if you think you can do better, and if you think not even better, if you think you can do one, suck it up and do it. Because I'll tell yeah. you. Yeah. All right. It so is so what's his <laughs> name? What's his username on the Kiss FAQ message board? Thinking of uh, some people who could be miserable at times, even with the best I, stuff I, I handed to them. I was. I just I literally we just walked into like the karaoke bar one night, the karaoke thing, and the guy's like, "Saw me. Hey, you the manager of that band?" I'm like, "What band?" He's like, 
the tribute band and all that stuff. I'm like, no. He goes, that sucked. I'm like, dude. <laughs> and he keeps going, okay, dude, screw you. When she walked, you can't, I can't remember if she says anything. She just droop. I'm like, okay, I'm falling her. That, that was it. And the guy just like stood there for all like, you know. Listen, and then, you, uh, you know, opinions are a dime a dozen. And you, know, you just don't, you, you know, on the other side of the coin, people who can just throw out a that sucks have no clue how much work <laughs> and effort goes into organizing anything that you present to fans you know whether it's an event yeah. whether it's a product whatever you know they have no idea what you and Joe went through and what the guests went through you know to, to be there and participate in it and be willing to so you know a little yeah. bit of gratitude yeah, it, even, it, your, even if it did suck it money, sometimes you just say good. thank you yeah we're not doing it for the money either I'll tell you that <laughs> Nope. <laughs> you know, because because basically Joe, Joe and I bought the necklaces, got the cups, da da da. My UV picks, we bought you know rubber bands. Those are all us. This is nobody else's stuff. You know, I I, I, gotta, I gotta say this too. We have to give uh, great thanks to Donna from the Kiss Limousine, her husband. They, they you know they helped us all day. The ones who did the cups and stuff. They uh, they did the banner for us and stuff like that. So they helped tremendously. And like I said, I keep telling everybody you should go check them out. You know, the Vegas. You know, give look them up. Uh, you know, they just don't do they have Kiss Limousines. They do other adventure tours in uh, in Vegas and stuff. They have a lot of stuff going on. Just not just, you know, Kiss Limousines and stuff. So they definitely have a lot of stuff. And they were, you know, they're always so nice. And they definitely helped out. You know, we can't praise them enough for helping us out. And we brought them on stage and did all that and praised them and all of that stuff. And I said, we had a couple of goofy things going on. <laughs> I know, and everybody says I look like Ozzy, so I went in the back room, changed, put on a little blue glasses there. Painted knuckles with you know Ozzy, put the rings on. He came out with little crosses and stuff. I came out one night, you know. I was like, oh, fuck. Where's Sharon? You know what I mean? <laughs> so we we just went with the flow. You know what I mean? And um, like I said too, we did. You know, I did miss a couple things that I promised. Like I said, we were supposed to have a moment of silence for people that you know no longer here with us that would love, probably would have been on the cruise. And for those people overseas and I know tragic crap that happens. You know, this is kind of like. You know, the escape, man. You know, like he says, this is the escape. So that was kind of the escape thing, and I'm sorry. We meant to do it. I just totally, everything was going 100 miles an hour after hey, the 40-minute delay. And, you know, and of course, I had a bigger agenda on my back of my mind the whole night. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Which, uh, uh, yeah, before we segue into, you know, <laughs> in, into getting on the boat, I, I, I don't want to spend a whole episode just on, on the gathering, but do, yeah, tell, do tell me about your proposal. Oh, boy, if, uh, I, you know, uh, James kind of, I always say his wrong name, he's a friend of ours, he actually videotaped it, so it's been kind of spread around, and uh, I had told Ian, Andy, uh, Noy, DJ Noise there that, actually, I told him, basically, uh, literally, before I walked up stage, I went in the back, I, I uh, composed myself for, like, a couple of seconds, because he had a back room, I composed myself, got the ring, put it in my pocket with the box, and, um, and actually, Kim almost found a ring before we left because I actually had it in a suitcase. And I picked up my suitcase that morning, and the stuff, all my stuff went over. I forgot to zip it. And she goes, what's going on? She came over, and I'm like, oh, crap. And I was trying to hide it from her, and thank God she didn't see it. Because she's like, what's the matter? I'm like, stay away from my luggage. And she's like, jeez, what's the matter with you? So anyways, I composed myself, walked over to Andy because I said, Andy, man, I want to have Ace for this fraction of era because it stops with the bells. And it's a nice, you know, segue into it. So I, you know, walked over to Andy. I'm like, Andy, fraction of era now. He's like, Andy, what's going on? I'm like. Uh, Andy, I'm gonna propose to Kim right now. He's like, what? And I'm like, uh, I'm going on stage right this second. He's like, are you kidding me? And I'm like, yes, yeah, start the song. He's like, okay. <laughs> so, so I then, uh, you know, basically I had to, uh, you know, somehow convince Kim to get back on the stage. And she's like, we already did the cups, we already did everything. So, anyways, I asked, you know, Kim pushed her in front of me. And I went second, and you know, and then Joe pushed up Patrice, to his wife, to get her up on stage to kind of fake something, and then. She's like looking at the box and she's like, "There's no more cops." I'm like, "Just stay here." And then I just was trying to thank everybody to think to try to just get her to stay on stage. She kept walking around back and forth and uh, basically uh, thanked her, you know, thank Patrice, thank Joe, and all this stuff, thank the other crowd because you know, basically, if you guys don't go, if people don't buy the ten dollar ticket stuff, this doesn't happen. You know what I mean? That basically pays the bills. So uh, I literally just turned around and said, "Stop talking." And I looked at the microphone. And I said, "Oh, by the way, one other thing." It, Hey Kim, will you marry me? Got down on my knee because I did it in the microphone, and she just totally was like, like, <laughs> like this is really. And the video was hilarious. And she's just standing there. I don't think the crowd really understood it for a second. And all of a sudden, the crowd kicked her, and they're like, "Holy crap!" You know, it just exploded. And she just started crying. She fell down on one knee. I gave her the ring, and she actually dropped the ring in box. <laughs> <laughs> 
it took her a couple, you know, a couple more seconds to, you know, kind of like, uh, yes, and then, you know, so uh, that's how that went. <laughs> that so, is absolutely awesome. I said, hey, what the hell? Why not do it in front of 700 people? What the hell, right? Yeah, no pressure, <laughs> right? And, if, and, and here's another thing too, and you know, <laughs> it, it wasn't your traditional ring. <laughs> I actually gave her a kiss ring. It says kiss like three times in gold. Oh. And you know, so it's not your traditional diamond, and uh, it's kind of funny. A lot of people loved it, and like this is kind of different, funny. But uh, you know what? I usually don't get too upset, and I'm, I'm going to say this, because some people, I don't know who they are, because Kim doesn't remember who they are, and he actually did a tour on the ship. So we go, well, hey, I want to see the ring. And, of course, I wasn't around when they, you know, so I still running around doing stuff or whatever. But there were some people at the party, and even did it onto the ship to her, came up and saw the ring. They're like, oh, that's the ring? Really? What? Really, people? Really? You seriously got to be kidding me. I know. I just proposed to her, and some people were like, "That's really the ring. It's not a diamond." You schmucks! I would never do that to anybody. So you, whoever did that to her, you fucking suck. Period. I'm sorry, I usually swear, but you suck. You know, I would never do that to anybody. That's just so disrespectful on this page. And no, they didn't even do it in front of me. They basically waited until I left. That's the saddest part about it. Going up to. You know what I mean? I would never do that to anybody. So that just infuriates me. I even told him, "Hey, I get you a real diamond if you want one." It's just that I didn't know her finger size, and I'm not gonna go asking people what's her size, and I can't steal a ring from her because she's wearing them. So th that ring was perfect. You know, I had to split. You can put it over, put it bends it. She loves it. She do not even care. She's like, "No." A ring no. is a ring it, is a ring, and whoever right. and whoever you here. are, you're a nasty you know, it has wanker. Do about the money and stuff. It's all from here. So yeah. I'm sorry. I, didn't, I don't usually swear on these things, but that pisses me off to the max because that was just so disrespectful. And not even, in, not even to do it in front of me. You had to go over there to her when she's having a great time. No, not, not even know? that. Just to at even, party, to even think the, that or do it at all. Wow. I, I, I know. But anyways, anyways, it, it's bygone. We're good. We, we don't have a date. People have had no date because she never saw this coming from a mile away. So we'll, her and I... Kind of in discussions about what we what we're thinking and what we're doing, but uh, I just want to say a shout out to everybody who thanked us, loved it. Thank you. You got a one to count. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> now, end of story. Moving on. <laughs> All right, let, let's get onto the boat because yeah, let's that, get that's what boat. everyone's waiting for. And uh, yep. I got to run a clock on this episode today because obviously I am sitting in a car, so uh, it's yep. a good opportunity for me to apologize to everyone for probably what is shitty audio quality on my side. And yeah, I've got my <laughs> air conditioning going, and that's just how it goes today because, again, I want to talk to Andy, and I only want to talk to Andy about the cruise. So you get on the boat. Tell me, yep, for, tell us about for, that, and uh, what are the first events that come up? All right, the, actually, the first thing is uh, when we, uh, you know, go in to get your key card and all that, they had statues, and they must have used them in Mardi Gras because i seen them online. So basically, instead of just going in with a green screen, have your picture taken, they actually had uh, the four statues each guy, Excellent. which was really different and really cool. And it was very easy to actually get on, uh, you know, like get your key card, get on the ship, real easy in New Orleans. I don't know what it is with Miami, New Orleans, off the hook with that. So that's a great thing. So you get on a cruise. People seem very mellow this year, which was very good. It wasn't like pushing and shoving and all that stuff. Oh, I didn't really see any pushing and shoving and stuff. So I don't know if anybody did, but so that was good, you know. In the rooms, we got into the rooms pretty easy. Not not too, too late. Last year was a little bit later, but this year was uh, really good. So uh, I don't know. Jim, then you can ask the questions, and I'll try, and I'll try to <laughs> answer as I could, wherever you want to start. <laughs> all right, let's start Sail Away Show. Because uh, Sail away show. That, the that is, show. Uh, they went back to an acoustic set this year for the first time in a few years. Um, how did you like it? Because the initial impression online from myself and the rest of the peanut gallery for people who weren't there was like, oh, meh. You know, it's like, oh, they. I, I did an analysis of the set list. Uh, they've done all the songs on previous acoustics. How did it go down in person? How do you enjoy it? Well, look at this way. They, you know, they did it at nighttime again, so it was acoustic. This time it's at night. So, I mean, you know, like last year they played electric, but it was at night. So now they're doing acoustic. The thing is, they said it was supposed to be songs, and then they were supposed to talk about the song and how it came up, you know, like a cute, like a, you know, a, a storytellers. Storytelling, which never happened. Paul maybe said one or two things about a couple of the songs, but other than that, no. So. I have to say, I mean, don't get me wrong, people. I love songs, and I'm a huge Kiss fan, I'd say. But some of the songs on the acoustic sale are just repeats or repeats of repeats. 
So for me, it was, you know, I mean, if this was your very first cruise, it's off the hook. I'm telling you, this was probably one, one of my top cruises of, you know, besides the thing. <laughs> I mean, really, it was one of my top, you know, probably three cruises, three of me in there. But the uh, sailors, you know, I mean, they played Coming Home. I love Coming Home. Plastic Cassidy, Do You Love Me, Christine 16, Hot in Hell, High Luck Woman, Shock Me, A World Out Heroes, Got to Choose, Hide Your Hide, Going Blind, Beth, Lover of All I Can, Every Time I Look at You, See You Tonight, and then Nothing to Lose with a little bit of All the Way Snippet, and then Colin Doc Love ended it. Which is, you know, I love it. It's the band. That's the way they're going to be. you got to get used to it, I guess. They're not going to dig too deep. It's just the way it is. You know, I wish they dig deeper with this stuff, but... I, 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 you know, what can you say? That's, you know, it is what it is. But I, I just, the thing, I can't stand, if Paul keeps saying, this is, you know, he says it right to the crowd. Oh, you, this is for the diehards. You guys are here. You know, this is for you diehards. And then they play something like they play every year. You know what I mean? So it kind of, you know, it's like hearing, I'm sorry, I could never, I could do it all, look it up for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? You can't turn around and say, oh, this is for the diehards. And then you play something you play every six months. It's repeat, repeat, repeat. So the Seattle Way show was okay, but it wasn't. I was hoping we could have got something a little bit more deeper, and that's that's that. That's all I can say. <laughs> so you didn't you didn't get the storytellers. You know, it's the it's no. the elephant in the room. I'm going to ask you, how did Paul sound live to you in person? Because everyone always brings it up these days. Yeah, yeah. For for some strange reason, I don't know what it is. He gets on the cruise, and it sounds fine. I mean, come on, I understand. It's not Paul of 1978, 77, you know, 79 anymore. It's not going to happen, people. you got to get used to it. And if you don't like it, don't go. Don't go to shows, don't buy, whatever. It is what it is. But I I'm telling you, for some reason, he gets on that cruise, and it sounds better than it does when they've had the tours the last couple of years. seems to every time he gets on the cruise, it, it works. It just works i mean you know they turn stuff down maybe a little bit more the acoustic thing maybe works better for him but yeah i mean it, it just sounded fine i don't know what it is it's it's i don't know what it is it's maybe a general rush it's you know whatever it is it works and you're talking on a ship outside and the ship's moving you think the sound would be more like you know crappy but it's not it actually sounds really good so i, I gotta say it, it was good i don't care the sound sounded good that night so what's no your problem What's your favorite song out of that set then? You know, what's the one oh that? Oh my god! I know we, we've, 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 yeah, we've heard most of them before, but you know, what's yeah. the one that you enjoyed? Uh, I have to say, out of out of all of them, man, it, it, well, you know, I really love because I, I really love the coming home. The coming yeah. home because the coming home off the un, 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 unplug was I thought it was the best version ever, and so I think it really comes out coming home. Really, really comes out really great un, unplugged. It does, you know, and, and definitely. You know, and I'm sorry, that's probably, and I love going blind. I mean, come on. I mean, this, I, I could, you know, I love her all I can. I mean, it, it, you know, I could keep going, but, you know, those, you know, early songs are really good. I mean, even Plastic Cat, I mean, they, I mean, sorry, see, they, they really came out good, though, you know. So, but coming home, it really sounded really good. I really like that version, Unplugged. Yeah, yep. I do. I, it's, it's Paul's great version of Unplugged. Oh, I agree with you. So, every, every time I hear that one, uh, whether it's off Unplugged or whether it's at a meet and greet, I love it. You know, what's, yeah, what's that one song on that set list that you're like, oh, Jesus? Um, you uh, know. Oh, Jesus, we want it now. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Well, there's a couple that I wouldn't, I'd rather skip. I wish they, you know, I'm, there's no offense. You know, you know me. I'm a big like I used to shock. We can go. The Beth can go. And it has. And I know they need. You know, they want to give Paul and Gene a break. So I know they have to do a song. But I, you know, it would be nice if. How about Tommy does when the lightning strikes? Yep. Why not? Or uh, you know, you know, Eric could do. You know, what's that song off the song boom? And you know, they, every says it's like all for the love of rock and roll. All for the love of rock and roll. Why not? You know, so. You know, or those maybe, two are kinda, hey, you know, you know I, I always think that they should do something. If they want to give Gene and Paul a little vocal break, they should think about doing what Eric Carr and Bruce Kulick did in the 1980s and do a little jam together, a little yeah. bit of soloing, maybe sing some stuff for each other. You know, one of them plays, one of them sings, and the other plays, the other one sings. A little, little bluesy jam session, and, you know, that's five, six minutes right there. And I don't like them doing Shock Me, and I, I was also kind of amused that they did it uh, acoustically. I've never thought that's one that works well. But, you know, no. you know, different people, different opinions, and yeah, whatever. Let's move on. You know, that was yep. the first night. Um, how does the end of the first day happen? Is that the end of it, really, for activities? Or are you, 
Is there more entertainment going on after that? Or yeah, what, it, it, what, what do there's you do? a lot of other bands playing and stuff going on. So, I, but you know, me, it's all about the Kiss thing. So, <laughs> if a Kiss thing's going on, I'm there. If, if another band's playing somewhere else, I, I miss it. So sometimes I miss stuff. But all the Kiss stuff, no. It, you know, the uh, you know the merchandise store opens up. You know, the uh, casino opens up to get the casino chips. <laughs> oh, and that stupid penny machine. They had pennies this year again. That thing, as soon as you got on the damn ship, is freaking broken within five minutes. It drives us crazy. You got to keep going back. And if the pennies, you twirl it, and it's not that easy. And you got to go slow on it, cranks hard. And it's like, oh, my God. I don't know what was worse on the cruise this year. The penny machine being down or the ice cream <laughs> machine being down. In the buffet, or the handle broken, or if it finally was fixed, it was no chocolate. The chocolate was gone. It's like ah. <laughs> but the penny machine. Oh, it's just yeah. I wish they get rid of the penny machine because you know as collectors you want to try to get as much yeah, as you can. You every, know? Every and then time. also they had a um, special keychain that lit up, and uh, I didn't get one. I didn't even know about it. There were only like a hundred, I guess, and I didn't even see the slip. And he says, "Oh, come." Uh, I, I was like, one of my friends said, "Hey, Andy, did you see these?" I'm like, hey, "This is some lighted thing." I'm like, "Nope, it rained on it, gone." So now I hear they're selling like on eBay and every place for like big bucks. I have never, never, I, I was like, what the hell? So, you know. Now you should, so, when, you know, when, when you get to your room, isn't there like a gift pack for you there with, uh. uh with, oh my God. With, did, with did they have a it? schedule? Uh, I'm sorry. See, it goes so fast. I think, uh, uh, they did, uh, one of the nights, uh, they gave us a towel this year. The kiss towel. Instead of after buying, they actually gave you a towel. And they, I don't have it open. Girl, Kim's got a shoe ripped there's open. I won't. <laughs> Anyways, it's the whole picture of the, you know, them. I mean, it's really nice from top to bottom. It's really nice. So that was one of the gifts this year. Uh, they gave the dog tags at the end of the thing, at the uh, the last night. And uh, they also uh, gave out, uh, I got it over there if you want me to go run and get it. But they gave uh, the, the picture of all four of them. And they all signed like a little poster. Right, and kind of closed right. the dock thing. So they gave us that. So those are the things they gave, like, every every night or every other night. <clears throat> okay, no vinyl this year. Is that a yay or a nay for you? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Or should they have uh, had some vinyl? It's a double-edged sword. I like the vinyl, but uh, when you think about it, sometimes it's a pain to get home. Because <laughs> you can be careful so it doesn't break. You know what I mean? That's the, yeah, that's the thing. So, you know, the post is nice. It's a little bit bigger than a than a than an album. You know, it's a little bit bigger. So, right. and those, and those are kind of you got to be tough to get home. You know, I you know whatever. I, I'll take anything. That's the way I look at it. I'll take anything. They gave it to me. <laughs> you know, because we pay a lot of money to get on the cruise. I'll take it. If they're gonna give me something. I'll take it. Hell yeah, so, I'm, with, I'm with you. If if it's there and it's not I'll, nailed down, it's uh, it's mine. Yeah, yeah, man. Believe me, they nail stuff down. Tape them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, let's get into the second day of the cruise. Um, what? Oh what's, wait. What, oh, I'm what's, sorry. Oh no, we gotta go back to the first day. Oh, I'm sorry, you, we're still yeah, there. Yeah, because okay. uh, you know, you know, uh, after seven years, guess who finally gets on the cruise? That we've been hoping and praying and slamming and saying for seven years. Um, and everybody knows the story Steel, about me and Steel Ed. Panther? No, Steel Panther, please. Uh, uh, you know, they did that story about me and Eric uh, kind of going back and forth at it and, uh, a couple of years ago in uh, New Jersey about uh, Mr. Bruce Kula getting on a cruise. Oh, he'll never get on a cruise, ever he said. And guess what? Bruce and Bob are on a cruise. Yeah! About time. About And I'll tell you right now, every, as everybody says, I hope I'm not too loud. I don't want to sound like I'm yelling, but they kick some serious ass, man. They were they brought down the house. I mean, everybody, you know, everybody's got usually get the phones out, and, like, and there are a lot of people not with the phones out because everybody's going, jumping up and down, and the crowd's jumping up and down, and people are going absolutely crazy for Bob and Bruce. And I'm sorry, I forgot the guy who was singing and doing the bass playing and the drama was, and the drama. I'm sorry, Brent, but I'm telling you, absolutely Brent. ripped house, totally ripped house. It was awesome. It was off the hook. <laughs> okay, I, I want to read that set list because yep. I was waiting for this because I had no idea. I had a little inkling of some of the stuff they might do. All American Man, Hide Your Heart, Wouldn't You Like to Know Me, Domino, Larger Than Life, Tears Are Falling, Nowhere to Run, Holy Shit, Tough That's Love, what? Tonight You'll Belong to Me, Who Wants to Be Lonely, and I watched the video of Bruce going through that um, solo, and I mean 30... Two years later, he's going through that solo like a hot knife through butter, just so yep. easy. He is just such a gifted musician, and Bob was absolutely unbelievable as well. Oh. And then Crazy Nights, Turn on the Night, which is 
That's a, a thank you Jesus moment for me because I just love that song. And I know he's done it live before, but, you know, the version that he cranked out with his brother was just something else. And then, of course, the goodbye. So, I mean, this is a reaction video. What the hell do you do when the, all that stuff from the 80s and Paul's solo album is just presented to you by uh, it, the Culex? I, I, you know, we, we all have an inkling of figuring they might do, uh, you know, a certain songs or something like that. But I had no idea that some of these songs were ever going to play. I mean, seriously, when they pull out No Way to Run, I, I'm about fainted. I'm like, are you kidding me? And then he started playing Tough Love. I'm like, are you shitting me? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm telling you, everybody, the whole cruise, highlighted their cruise. And I'm talking, this is a kid's cruise. And they're like, kids better step it up the next night because the Cute Brothers, man, and, and, and like I said, the bass player the, killed it. I mean, if they don't, they don't. I, I even heard Bruce. People even saying Bruce was saying something like, "Oh, they probably won't invite us back. We were that good." And I'm like, I hope they do. You know, even uh, and Paul's uh, pizza, or whatever the um, he wasn't pizza this year, but he even said, "Do you like the? Did you like the? You like the? You know, everybody that was on the cruise? Did you like the? Would you like the brother? You know, Bruce and Bob back? And of course, you know, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> yeah, and, and people are like calling, "Oh, when are they going on tour? What you know? When are they going to do this somewhere else?" Because from my point of view. That is something we've waited for. And th then again, you remember that uh, Union played to 250 in a bar. You know, so, you know, is, is it a, um, an economically viable proposition or is it just the perfect vehicle for Kiss Cruises? You know, and Kiss Cruise 8, you know, they're working on it. And I got, I got my name on that mailing list. I, I, I figured if I'm doing stupid stuff and I'm always sick, I might as well uh, maybe do a cruise. Uh, oh, are you going to do one finally? I, I may well. I'll see if I, I can get on the list. No, I'm on the list. I, I'll yeah. see if I uh, can get a, get myself on there. And, yeah. uh, love I that. mean, any, any, anywhere you sit, you can see, you know, the show and the indoor shows. You know, a lot of people want to be in a pit or whatever. You know, I, I mean, I've been in a pit. It's not all that great at times. You know, I mean, because so, you get early and you're just waving. And if you're not really, if you're not really tall, if you're not in the first row, you're in the second row, or you're in the sides. It's a little bit tougher. So it's better sometimes to actually be back in the seat seats. You know, I mean, it's big. I mean, you can see from anywhere. It's mint, and I'm telling you. It's awesome, but we'll, we'll get to the, we'll get to the so show there. Someone, <laughs> someone posted on the FAQ message board, there is no way KISS is going to top the Kulik brothers. Do you agree with that statement? And obviously we haven't talked about their shows in, indoor yet, but when you compared it to the Sail Away show, were you like, now that's a damn show. Yeah, between between the acoustic show and the Kulik show, I was like, the Kulik just killed it. <laughs> Basically, they were better than they were better than Kiss on the acoustic show, without a doubt. They, they basically blew them away, and, and I don't know if it's because uh, you know I, I've been on the cruise now seven times and I've seen Kiss over a hundred times, and you hear the same songs over at times. But you know, I mean, like I said, the Cubics play stuff that you're never gonna hear again. Period. You know, I can't see you know even all the kids. You know, they say oh they'll play uh, you know deep cuts here and there. I don't think you're ever going to hear Tough Love or, or you know, uh, No Way to Run. Or, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, I, just, I don't think you're ever going to hear that stuff. <laughs> that's, why, that's why, I mean, like I said, so those songs are the first time ever I've ever heard. So I'm like, that's why, too, it's a shock factor. So, yeah, they definitely, I'm telling you, that was, like I said, a lot of people, huge highlight of the cruise, huge highlight. Bruce, know, so. Bruce can never not be in my good book because he's just such a classy guy. Bob's oh, cool. Classy guy. And yeah. just, just the, uh, you know, for the stuff off Asylum, uh, you know, in that set for me as a guy who got into the band with that album, I was just, my jaw dropped when I saw that set list. And I, the performance as well was absolutely stunning. And, and only a little bit of the video, you know, and it's, of course, YouTube quality. But it just looked like, you know what? It looked freaking fun. I'm telling you, people are not like like older days. You know, the phones weren't out as much as much, and people you can see if you look back. I don't know how much if it's in the videos or not, but you look back on the floor more in the middle. You know, people just jumping up and down like crowds. They were jumping up and down like the old days. Yeah, yeah, dancing and jumping up and down. You could if you look around, people like really, really singing and like really getting into it. I mean, I'm telling you, it was more the '80s kind of vibe that way. In that way, it was. I, I hope they're back. That's all I can say. I hope they're back, and um, that's that. That's all I can say. I just hope they're back. And if they are, great. <laughs> so what... People, take your survey and get them back on. That's what they want. They ask the survey, so do your surveys. 
So yeah. do it. Oh, so <laughs> if there's a survey, people, you gotta, yep. you, you gotta yep. do a solid for. If I'm gonna be on Kiss Cruise Eight, um, I, I, I gotta have the Culex there. Simple as that. Yep. That, that's what I want. Okay, so that's uh, that was on the first. That was after the uh, acoustic sail away the same day. Yeah. Okay, no, I was I was, uh, I was under the impression it was the second day. That's why I kind of no, no, led that uh, Bruce, way. Bruce actually had to get off and cause Mel to. Um, he's got he had a uh, show with Brian Funk, so we had to fly back. So. Yep. I <clears throat> uh, jumped. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm maybe I'm getting my days confused, but yeah, the second day or whatever the Cosmel day, he, he had to. It a fly out at Cosmel. And, uh, yeah, I remember so, people joking about it, saying, "Oh, after that set, Paul made him walk the plank." But you know, you know they, they would have they would have run the set by the band anyway. You know, as a matter of respect. I, I, maybe I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't doubt it for a second that they would say, "Hey, oh, this is what we plan on doing." Um, yeah. Do you have a problem with any of it? Just as you know, uh, you know, it's Bruce. Bruce has got to be yeah. one of the classiest people in rock and roll. He's gonna his former employers. He's always gonna be cool. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I'd like to find out from him if that was actually the case. But uh, yeah. you were gonna say something. Go ahead. Yeah, and then uh, what day? What day? Uh, oh yeah, they had a Q and A. That was the next day. It was the Q and A during the day. You know, with Lydia, Bob, Bruce, uh, Michael James Jackson, George Big Lopez. John, and, and yeah, no, George Lopez had not. They, they, this is the panelist. The panelist, you know, Q and A. No, that's later. Oh, okay. that, that's that's okay. that's that's later on the kids one. So how how you know. was the panelist? Everyone, of course, you know, just like the Kulik brothers. I'm going to start with the most important person to my mind in that panel, and that's Michael James Jackson. Um, what was your take on him and how he came across and all of that? Well, I, I tell you the truth, I actually got I actually got picked. For doing one of the questions, and uh, basically, uh, you know, I, you know, I see on uh, FAQ and other places, and I mentioned this before, last year before, they basically screen the questions. Mm -hmm. You know, you, 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 you know, they ask you, you throw a question in, if you get picked, you know, and they put you, and basically, you show up at this, uh, the Spinnaker Lounge, uh, they put you in number order, they give you a number, and you put in order, so they know the question, and then basically, you walk you down, they go up to the microphone, and you say what's on your thing. You're not supposed to say out of your whatever. So uh, this year I actually I did get picked. I just I throw something and and Jillian you'll you'll actually my question is something that you'll love because you love books and basically and everybody's asked Bruce through the years Bruce would you ever do a book about the great the good the bad and the ugly and the wicked awesome and I asked Bruce the question and that was my question to Bruce and uh, Bruce basically said uh, you know his brother's going to do a book and then Bruce is actually going to do a book but you know he says basically there was no ugly times in Kiss. And he's not gonna write anything ugly, you know. Whatever, you know what I mean. So, but you know, come on now. We know that's not true. There's always, you know, <laughs> there must have been some kind of not all great all the time. You know, it's like that's life. But anyways, uh, Jenny, you you'll be happy to know at some point Bruce is going to do a book. <laughs> I, I am thrilled by that. And uh, you know, obviously yeah. from uh, he came over to our table in uh, L.A. for the expo and just started telling us <laughs> a story. And it was one yeah. I'd never heard, and I'm, I'm not going to repeat it because, you know, yeah. if he puts that sort of stuff in a book, it was a very positive, interesting story. You know, a little sad, but uh, I, I say that in print, it'd make for a good read. And you know what? Yeah. I want to know about Andrea True. I want to know about, uh, you know, the bands that he worked with before Meatloaf and his development as a musician. I, I want to know all about that, where he was Stevie, Michael Bolton. You know, blackjack. Yeah. Um, you know, having a chance and and falling apart and kiss. Obviously, it's going to be mostly kiss. And all the yeah. he's done so much session work. He's got a book. And yeah. you know, and he didn't want to do dirt. He said it. He says they like the Molly Crew book. Look, it's all dirt. It, this is what the publishers people want. Dirt. And he goes, I'm not going to do the dirt. He says it. So I'm, I'm not going to do the dirt. It's just not worth it. I don't like it. That's not me. So that's all. And that was number seven. And I, to be honest with you, after I was number seven, I got off. I got off the like the little. <laughs> where the pool is because they gave you a little bit higher up. I actually, well, as soon as I got done my question, I ran. When it got Kim, Kim had my, because uh, she had one and I had one, she could get one signature piece from them after the meet and greet. So literally, I jumped off the thing and ran, got her, and we went downstairs to uh, the area where they were going to end up being set up for, for all the, for the people, the panelists, so you could go down there and meet them and have a signature and pictures, one picture. Uh, actually, the guy, the guys, the guy who's doing Bruce's picture, he's like, "Hey, can I, you know, take your phone?" He's like, <laughs> "So he, the guy, the, actually, the guy was going nuts when he was standing getting your thing signed." So, got to thank that guy. The guy took really, really good pictures. And then, you know, so I basically ran out and get in line because I knew the lines were going to be like, <laughs> and it, they only gave so much time. At first, it was only supposed to be like an hour and a half, and then they ended up being like three. So, it, it, even three hours, I don't think it was, you know, basically, it wasn't enough time. I, I don't know if people got cut off or not. I don't know. But even when I ran down there, 
and Kim and I got in line, there was there was a lot of people, a lot of people in line. So, and of course, you know, you could go to all of them, and uh, you know, the Bruce's course is the longest and stuff like that. And you know, the Bruce had his signature, and he's like, "Man, you look familiar." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, I'm kind of all over the place." He just kind of chuckled, but uh, uh, it was really that was really good. You go to everybody, and uh, it me like a dummy. I couldn't really. I didn't bring anything for Michael James Jackson to sign because I, I know he did the Creatures thing and I know he did the Lick It Up, but I really didn't want him to bring my albums there to have him sign. I'm not kind of like that, but it's funny. He had his little name card. And I'm like, I go to him and say, yeah, Michael, I'm a huge fan, but I don't have something for you to sign. So I'm going to pick up your little key, your little card there with your name. I'm going to hold it up next to him. Him and his wife started laughing at me. They're like, you hold up next to you. You're Michael James Jackson. and I'm going to point at you. <laughs> He's a nice guy and stuff. It was just funny. And I said, you know, so I just don't have it. Just, it's just, I don't know what to do. You know what I mean? You know, so and he didn't have anything to sell there for sale for him. You know what I mean? So I think he's just a nice guy, but isn't like, from my understanding, he's very kind of like, he doesn't really like the big spotlight. No, so, no, no, you know? no, that's my understanding. He's a little bit reclusive and out of the yeah. uh, the public eye, and that's what makes him being on the cruise a very special event for everyone who attended it. You know, you've got a guy who um, does not do the expo scene or has not does not yeah. um, do interviews um, no. very often, and has worked with a, tr a tremendous amount of very important artists throughout his career. Oh yeah. Um, so that he again another person who probably has a book in him. So, you know, you you were very lucky to get to interact with him even in that sense, you know, even if you didn't have something to get signed, it doesn't matter. You know, you yeah. just get to say hi, thank you, and, you know, that that's a, that's a very cool story. Yeah, that's what he did. He said, hi, thank you. I like, love to see all the creatures and the look it up thing. And I hope you can work with them again, basically. And I said, hey, can I have a picture? I took the picture, and he said, no, and I, like I said, I hope you get it. And his wife was funny, and he said, they took a picture of me, told his little car with him and stuff like that, and it was funny. But, you know, like I said, Bruce is the biggest line. Go through the Bruce line and, you know, the Lydia. And I've, you know, met Lydia and all Lydia, so stuff like that. And, you know, Big John was, you know, they're all there. Every course, they're all nice and all that stuff. So I wonder how Big John's arm is because isn't he tired of doing that yet? I would imagine so. I would imagine he's pretty tired of doing the hand thing. And, you know, but that's going to be that's gonna be the most popular thing in, a, you know, the, the stage stuff from People magazine, you know. So, yeah, well, But, hey, if it works, it works. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got to love it. Looking, yeah, course, looking, looking forward to, to his book. The... Yeah, did he yeah. did he say anything about that? Uh, either anything you heard on ship or you know? I've heard, I heard he's gonna, I know, I've just heard from him and them that earlier in the year that they're supposed to be at the end of this year. It's supposed to be almost like December. That's what I had heard. That was the last thing I heard. It was supposed to might be out in December. But you know how books go. It takes a long time. <laughs> like Bruce yeah. said, it takes over a year or more even to get the book. After you put it in, it takes more of it, like a year just to get it, you know, whatever. You know? And, and basically now, if you haven't hit around now, um, you're going to miss Amazon for the Christmas sales period. So you're better off just waiting. So, yep. Yep. you know, uh, December's where it's at for sales. All right, so next event. Uh, I got to remember here. Yeah, I wish I had that schedule stuff in front of me. I know they had a love gun night, a dress to kill night. The Cycle Circus night was last. They had an animalized night stuff. And, um, you know, you could dress up, do wild things. If you want to dress up, you know, and you have background, you can go get photos done. They have the fancy photos in the background, you know, green screens. They had, like, the love gun, you know, the back album thing, pictures. And uh, they had a dress to kill one, which they had uh, basically had the original photo of it in black and white, the front cover, like, down in the corner with the Kiss World in it. You know what I mean? So you could take pictures, and I don't think people realize it. You could, uh, you know, because these are, like, once-in-a-lifetime things. So if you don't if you do not do these things, you'll never, you'll never get them again. They, it's they're gone, you know? So, uh I, I like getting into that, and of course, I always like to get into all the like crazy things. So, you know, animalized. I dressed up, you know, like zebra pants on, animal, you know, animal shirt. Or actually, actually, it's the weirdest thing for kids, right? You know, lick it up. Paul wore it with like the Spanish with the you know the leopard and the zebra, right? But animalized, they didn't kind of in a way. Yeah, black pants. So it was kind of like a reverse thing. That was weird, but you know, I did that and had fun taking pictures. And uh, what was that? Uh, that was night one. You know, kisses night one was the. Third night? I get confused now. I get, yeah, you know. you know, we're not sticking to the schedule. We're just going yeah. with what you remember. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I had, uh, uh, so basically what it is, if you, I had uh, show two, so I had my picture, night one, of sh night one, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You go reverse. So if you go to show two, your picture's night one of the night one show. If you have night one show, you have your picture's a night two of the show. So we had a picture taking uh, night one of <laughs> the indoor show of night one. So we uh, had that, and now... Uh, we saw they cause cause Mel and I do the bar crawl and that was always fun, you know. So if anybody if you go on a kiss cruise and uh, you ever want to go on a bar crawl, come to mine. 
because I heard that the Dives did one with him, and he's like, man, you got to go to this guy named Andy's, man. He kicks some serious butt. <laughs> we have a lot of good times. So, anyways, it's a good stress to get off when you get off the ship and we do a bar crawl. We have fun and stuff for free, and, you know, I, we have shirts made that kill us and everything. But it's really fun, so if anybody uh, you wants to go on a cruise or is going to go on a cruise, if you like to drink or not even drink, just go out and laugh and have a good time, watch videos and do pictures, it's a great time. So, anyways, that helps me remind me what's going on. So, uh, we did Cosmo, got back on the ship, and... Uh, uh, I missed the stream. The stream was playing outside on deck at four because uh, by the time we got back, we had to get ready because, uh, you know, you get ready, you change. And uh, we painted our faces like that. You and, uh, looks yeah, we painted our faces that night. Absolutely fantastic. We, we, well, we, we, had, we had them, the people on the cruise, paint our shit and paint my face that night because <laughs> Tim and I, she did, because uh, that was a phone night with the band. And she says, hey, let's do something different. I said, okay, what do you want to do? She goes, I want to paint myself, you know, face, get my face painted as Paul Stanley. And I said, well, I kind of want to do something different. I want to represent all of them because I wore my. You know, solo shirt, shorts, and sneakers all match. I said, I want to do like the Haunted Hell, but I want it done in color and just kind of thing. And they're like, okay. And it came out, yeah, it actually came out really good. You look, you look and, great. Uh, I thought it was a really creative design. I thought awesome. Yeah, something funky, different. You know, I mean, it was the Haunted Hell, but not really the Haunted Hell. It was kind of different. And uh, we had a picture taken. And as usual, the pictures are really fast and they're running late. They're running actually behind. And I don't know if people have heard us all. You probably heard us all that. Uh, <clears throat> Gene took off his boots, and it was different rumors. Uh, we heard that uh, that uh, he broke a boot, so we took him off. We also heard that he said his feet were tired, so we took off the boots. And we heard that because we were standing there waiting, and we saw Paul outside the area. Like, you know, they had the screen, they got it blocked off. And we saw Paul around the other side talking to somebody. And then we heard Paul actually got mad at Gene for taking off the boots, and they got into a little bit about the, the argument. I don't know how true or not true it is. I don't know anything. That's all I heard. You know, it's all rumors. But Gene didn't have the boots on at some important point, and people are complaining. So I see he's black. And actually, when we got a picture, Gene was wearing big, huge white socks, and he was standing on a box oh my to God. make himself tall, to make himself even, so they could take the picture straight all across. Um, I thought our picture came out fine. I uh, kind of like trying to turn sideways, but I wish, still to this day, and everybody says it, it's not that I want to talk to the man. You know, because I know if they make too much long time, people start talking to them instead of trying to, you know, whatever. But I wish they give us people that pay all this money two to five extra seconds that you actually get in here. Because literally, I walk it out, and Kim's in front of me because she wants to go to Paul, stand next to Paul, or you know, whatever. So she's in front of me, let her go first because she goes, wait, when you walk in, it's Gene, Eric, Paul, Tommy. He's been the same for the last, like, four years now that way. And, um, you know, I can't stand in front of Eric. If I stand in front of Eric, he's gone. I mean, literally, he's. <laughs> he's totally unless they put gone. him on a box. I mean, you cover him, cover him up. He's like, oh, poor wee lad. Well, anyway, saw my picture the year before, and I was giving the finger in the picture, and I actually leaned forward and went straight, like, like lean really forward, is because I don't want to cover up Eric. Because I literally, if I stand a little bit more in front of him, he's like shadowing out. He's he's totally gone. You won't see him. You know, unless they get him on a box. So, anyways, I usually stand next to Gene or all you one time, you know, stand on the other side of Tommy. So, anyways, I stood next to Gene. I'm like, hey, here's my man. As soon as, I mean, literally, standing there, I'm walking. He's sort of like, walk up. Here's my man. And Eric's looking at me. And I'm like, here's a fist. And, my, and they're like, you know, what do it? I'm like, turning, right? You know what I mean? I'm trying to turn without, I mean, I'm not even trying to talk to him. It's like that. I mean, you didn't get ushered off that fast. Yep. But I wish they'd give it a couple extra seconds. You can actually, like, really turn, you know, give that extra, I mean, you know, because even sometimes the band's not even looking. They're like, I mean, in one of our photos, Eric's like looking like. like <laughs> yeah, or, you, like or as I, I've posted, you know, my shitty picture from Edmonton with Gene. Oh, you know, it, it, it goes that fast. You know, yeah. and you know, you're lucky. You look great. Kim doesn't look quite I, ready. I, but I thought, I yeah, thought it she was, looks. I thought it was adorable. She picture. looks scared. Yeah, she just looks a little scared. Oh, she's nervous. She's, you know, she paused. Her, Paul touched me. You know, because of the year before, she's like he. Uh, she goes, I, I don't know. I'm like, don't worry about it. If you say, you know, Paul, can you put your hand on me? Like, but turning and just say to him, like, he's behind you. Just say, Paul, can you put your hands on my shoulder? He'll do it. You know, or you can put your arm around. I'm like, they'll do it. You just got to do it. They're not going to complain as long as you don't get, like, too, like, too mental or crazy. But I wish they'd just give an extra couple seconds so you can actually do it. Set it up, like, really quick and then move on, you know. But that that's that. So, anyways, that's that. And then uh, we went down the atrium. Do you uh, basically see uh, the indoor show? So, you know, so night one, the indoor show. So where do you want to start, Jillian? <laughs> where do you start with that? Because um, let's just say it, you know, did KISS redeem themselves 
redeem from, themselves from what? <laughs> from um, I'll, I'm going to call it a lackluster acoustic set and an absolutely insane Kulik Brothers set. They came out and ripped into tomorrow and tonight for the first I time think, live ever. So yeah, and, and I thought when 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 they played tomorrow and tonight, when they came out and played tomorrow and tonight, everybody lost their minds. I mean, even the atrium, everybody lost their minds. They're, you know, because everybody's thinking, oh, my God, if this down out with tomorrow and tonight, what's going to keep going? What's going to keep happening? You know what I mean? I, 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 literally, it's the first time I've ever heard tomorrow and tonight live. So first time ever. You know what I mean? So everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be, you know what I mean? Absolutely bananas. You know? So we were all like everybody the atrium. Because like I said, we were, we were in the atrium watching with everybody else with a bunch of people. And, you know, and, you know, it, Tomorrow tonight side, off the hook. So everybody's, yeah, what's going to happen next? So anyways, uh, you want to go through the set list? <laughs> yeah, because uh, what, what's going to come next if you kick off with t tomorrow and tonight? Sweet pain. Yeah, sweet, sweet pain, pain, man. I love it. Second, Thank you. <laughs> second time ever. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I, Kurt and Jeff uh, reported that that was only done at the first U.S. show of the Destroyer Tour back in 1976. So h holy crap. You know, already, yep. and then you get into, you know, shout it out loud, hotter than yeah. hell, I love it loud, and I'd be, at that point, I'd be well, going. Well, it, it went like, uh, it went tomorrow tonight, sweet pain, shout out loud, I love it loud, flaming youth, and then uh, uh, hot and cold. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot and cold, and then uh, say yeah, war machine, and then is that you, and then cold gin, night one, and lick it up, black time, Detroit, rock city. Rock and roll night, and of course, did the ultimate at the end. I, you know what I mean? I, so I, I can't believe that they pulled in a Sonic Boom song. That's yes. that's kind of my holy shit moment out of that set, and it's a really good one as well. Um, yeah, I was I was kind of I was you know here's the thing too, okay? Um, you know they play Shout Out Loud. It's like okay, you know they kind of kind of get it. It's a party thing. We're doing a thing, and then they play I Love It Loud. You know now it's time to go. Okay. This might be getting back into the, you know, the normal kiss set, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like, Bleh. and then all of a sudden, Flaming Youth, which is, you know, it's been, now it's been played. This is on the second year, which is, which is kind of cool because once they drop it, it's never going to be played again. Once they finally, you know, get rid of it, so I don't mind Flaming Youth. But when Hot and Cold came out, it was like, I was even stunned. I was like, wow, he's playing Hot and Cold, you know. But the audience reaction to Hot and Cold. Because, like I say, you were watching on a big screen. It was a little bit off. They, everybody kind of went like, what is this? And, you know, even in the age trip, people were like, what is this? Kind of in a way, we're like, seriously. And they're like, what is this? Which, you know, I, I think it's cool because it's something different. Yeah. It's not the same song. First time ever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know? I'm, I'm, like I'm going to give Kiss props. Big yeah. props. And I'm, I'm a critic. I follow the sets, obviously. Because they pulled off something that's not a classic. They pulled yep. something in off a recent album that yep. maybe didn't get a fair shake and they followed it with say yeah yeah which, and, that, and, that's you know, two, say, yeah, two booms in a know. row yeah I, I gotta admit i'm not a big say yeah fan live i think it's actually better on the record than it is live i don't know what it is it just does not go over well for me it just never has i it just i, I don't know if this is paul thing keeps saying yeah say yeah you know what i mean he stands it at the end usually you know how that say yeah and it's, it just doesn't work. It personally doesn't work for me. I know a lot of people like it. It just doesn't work for me. I think it actually sounds better on the album than it does live. I don't know. It just that's just me. And of course they go into War Machine, and I love War Machine. Don't get me wrong. War Machine is like a, one of the greatest two songs ever done. But now it's been super overplayed. Oh, it's been it's been murdered. I would take Parasite in that place any and, day. And I'm and, and to this day I'm sorry. I don't care what anybody says. Nobody can play War Machine like Vinnie Vincent. There is no topping me playing War Machine. And if you and people, oh, you know, I don't care what you say. If, if you never saw Vinny live play War Machine, you have no clue. You might see it on a video. It's a lot different. Vinny just totally, it was off the hook. It's never been played the same. I mean, people try to play it the same, but it's never been the same. And uh, I love War Machine. Don't get me. I, War Machine is up there with my songs. I love War Machine. Yeah, but it's, it's a great song. It's just it's, it's just, just tired in the set, okay? Yeah, you know, it's tired. Just, just like Flaming, then, Flaming Youth will get tired in the set next year if it remains. Yeah, yeah. And then, but, you know, Paul pulls one out of the back pocket. Is that you? <laughs> you know I, what I mean? Who saw, who saw that coming? I mean, I, no I think... No one saw that coming. And, and I, I, I think people you. were expecting something from Unmasked because yeah. of uh, Bob 
being on the cruise. It, it was kind of yeah. like something that was going around that maybe they're going to do Naked City or, you know, She's So European. But is that you? I didn't see that one coming back in. And it started down. It, it was tuned down so far. It sounded yeah. like they were starting into Tears Are Falling. And then all yeah. of a sudden, it's it's Yeah, that. it started, like, almost out of slow. And everybody's like, what is this almost? I mean, everybody. Everybody's like, what? what's going on? And all of a sudden, it kicked in. I'm like... Wow, and it sounded so good. Yeah. It actually sounded like rock. It wasn't like that hip, you know. It didn't sound like that poppy sound that you hear. You know what I mean? It's like you know what you you know when you're you know like I was made for loving you. They, they you know live. It's it's harder live than it is on the album. Is that you? I go. You know what I mean? It it sounded so good. You know what I mean? So I did loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. <laughs> and then, and then, of course, you go through more standard fodder: cold gin, lick it up, yeah, black cold diamond, gin. Detroit, yeah. lick, lick it rock up. it on, like... roll all night. And then people yeah. are probably starting to leave, getting ready to leave. And... Oh, nobody leaves. <laughs> but it, here's the thing, right? They're playing rock and roll night, right? And the confetti comes out a little bit. They shoot a little bit of confetti, and he's like, "Yeah, they're playing rock and roll night." And everybody, everybody thinks this is all, you know, because it's night one, so you haven't heard any of the songs yet. So then, you know, they get a little bit of confetti coming out, and everybody's like, yeah, yeah, rock and roll light, this is going to end. What's gonna... And next thing you know, without even hesitation, right into I. And everybody just loses their mind. And not just lose their mind, you, you know, the confetti, right? It's, you, know, you know, you get the white out, as everybody calls it now, because it's all white confetti. The confetti didn't stop from beginning of I to the end of I. And it had these streamers, you know, not just, you know, those white streamers that come out. You know, the last couple of years, you see those, like, mm -hmm. in the last couple of tours, the white streamers fire out first, and then all the confetti fires all over the place. Yep. They threw white ones from the side, and all of a sudden they threw red ones. For the first time I've ever seen red ones shoots out from the front, and the white confetti blasted through the whole, I mean, through the whole song. It never stopped through the whole song. And that song's not, like, two minutes it's like a four minute song yeah. kicked ass i'm seriously everybody's been waiting for this to happen awesome thank you thank you <laughs> yeah and I, let me echo that you know peanut gallery thanks you as well because same response as when they did the oath a couple of years ago um, yeah just absolutely insane we all we all have a little bit of a you know a fetish for the elder and some of the material on that album getting played live and you know it hasn't been done since the fridays um, you, know, you know, broadcast. That was the only time they ever did it live. They tried it here and there on the convention tour, but you know that that was just special. And I was not expecting five. I thought they yeah. might throw a bone or two, maybe recycle some stuff they'd done from some of the other ones. I didn't expect them to be doing that amount of, you know, really cool stuff, and also doing it very well. That was what got me. As soon oh. as we started hearing some of the videos. Uh, and yeah, again, it's not the same listening on YouTube as it was in person and probably listening to the simulcast. Um, but wow, I thought they performed very well. My one criticism from afar was they weren't particularly energetic on stage. They looked a bit kind of bored at times. You know, that they would they were just kind of, I, I don't know, it was just something that maybe I'm picking up on. I don't know, you're there. How do you do seem? You, you gotta you gotta remember too that, that you know they're not kids <laughs> they're not like you know also uh, you know it's a ship it's moving <laughs> it, it always uh, at nighttime if nobody knows this I would imagine if you've been on a cruise ship you know during the day they slow down the ship so basically you can walk around the decks and stuff you know because if they move faster you wouldn't be able to you wouldn't be able to get in the pool and any of that stuff and the wind would be like blowing crazy and stuff like that because at nighttime you know so they slow down during the day. And then at nighttime, they got to make up the time, so they go faster, you know? Yep. So they usually do about the 25 to 26 knots, whatever it is, the fast they can go. And, you know, this, you know, the ship's rocking as it is anyways. So you're going like this, and, you know, they're wearing platform shoes, you know. <laughs> I, I, I'm very shocked that they have that, not everybody's fallen, really. <laughs> no, they, they haven't taken ace on the on the cruise yet, of course, so. Uh, oh, man, I forgot not to mention that when we're doing the Q&A thing. Can I jump back to that? Yeah, to get anything. You know, I, I do have now a, a I tight time, right, Andy. I've got about five minutes, so let's get in yeah. any of your, your thoughts that you've missed and uh, also your show. Uh, i tell you right now, and, and I kind of knew it, and, and it didn't happen, though. Ace was asked to be on a cruise this year. And people were like, oh, yeah, Ace will never go on. Ace was asked. Ace said no. Ace was asked to be on the Q&A thing with the uh, panelists, and who knows, he might have played. So hopefully, Jillian, if maybe next year. There's hope. Like he, the bird, he, yep, he's just people told me. He's just been hey, traveling Mike. to Australia with Alice Cooper, so you know he may have wanted a break and work on his recordings and stuff. He may yeah, just not be in the right time. He but if, he, and, if yeah. he was asked, 
There's hope. He was, I'm telling you, Keith LaRue mentioned it during yeah, a cube and a He's straight up bullshit. He's straight up. Nope. Point, point straight up. The U Ace was definitely asked to be on the cruise, point blank. So hopefully, maybe next year. All right. So, so show. And, and show. Still, uh, the, the, the pre-order, they had a pre-order for merchandise this year, which was really great for the first time. So you could order the merchandise at a time. So that was really good. So, uh, you know, we went to the merchandise store like two days later, and they still had stuff, and it was a huge crowd. And, I mean, uh, the casino for the casino chips is still a chaos. People still fighting. You mentioned the chip that on our, our previous review. Those freaking yeah. casino chips. What was it? The guy who went in and bought, what was it, $3,000 worth one year? Yeah, they, they, they uh, limited to uh, 25 chips per transaction the first day, and then after that, but still, they sold out of the $5 ones, like, really quick, because they only made, so why you said, they made, like, $500 worth of the fives, and they, because they made 100 a hundred dollar one, a twenty five dollar, and a five dollar one. So they did it again this year. So it, they've disappeared, and people blah blah blah. And you know, of course, people are selling them online still, whatever. Um, let me see what else. I'm trying to think. Oh, I, 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 get, I don't even know if we get enough time. Uh, like I said, I dress up. I get into it. I mean, that's that was, I, I mean, I'm kind of bummed about that. The first couple of years, people really got into the theme nights. It seemed the theme nights now. People are really not. Yeah, I mean, there are people who get into it. But it seems to be dropping less and less and less. People are not really getting to the theme night, which I'm kind of bummed about because that was a really cool and nice thing. People get all dressed together, get together, you know, show off. You know, they used to make like little parade things so everybody could see like little kids. But we're adults, most of us adults doing it. And um, that was like, you know, thing like that. But uh, anyways, I have a <laughs> I don't know how much time you got left, but I got a quick, I got quick five, minute. five minutes. All right, we'll try to do this fast. Uh, if anybody seen that dress, in Cycle Circus night, so I made up these masks. I got a half mask. I paid my half, me and Kim. But uh, we were in the atrium, and I got a whole clown suit. I got my hair all on, clown suit. And, so, and people didn't recognize me at all. And I had, you know, those stupid um, people. Like, what, you get those, um, you know those carnival kind of blow-up things kids made? And people were, why would you buy those? Well, that was a perfect thing to buy. So I had, the, like, the sledgehammer one. I'm walking around with it. I had... Um, Pins that said Cycle Circus had made with chains, and I saw people I liked or I dressed up or something. I'd give them one and stuff like that. But I was like creeping around like a clown. Well, anyways, I'm in the atrium, right? So the main center, I'm sitting there. Kim, Kim hadn't changed yet, and uh, um, oh my god, we forgot about the Gene, damn the Gene Ball thing. There's so many. This Jill, you gotta have a part two of this. This, there's so much stuff, yeah, man. Let's this, let's definitely do a part two, and we'll we'll go so back to you, you know, and, and see what we missed, and uh, go yeah, back to Walt, it. Walt, the Gene thing, the Paul thing, the Eric thing, the Tommy thing. There's so much more. Um, but anyways. Um, it's funny, and I love the guy, Joe Polio from uh, Podcast Rock City. He's a great, great guy. Yes. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but this is funny, and he, he feels bad about it. Here we go. So anyway, Kim goes, hey, he goes, Joe Polio. And I'm like, okay. So I start creeping, chasing after him, right? He's got his buddy with him. His buddy's he, Joe's in front, his buddy's behind, and now we're to, like, the photo area. And the photo thing's that thing where you can see behind and look for photos. So I go, shh, not this friend, right? I go, shh. And I, and I tap him with the thing, and I was, you know, hit people with it, but lightly, you know, with the with the – you know, yeah, stupid boy. And I hid, right? So Joe must have turned around and said, who the hell did that? And so he starts walking. So I came around the other way, and he's walking. He's walking towards the, the merchandise, the bliss room. So I go, and I hit him again. And he turns around, and he goes, he goes, who the hell's mess with me? Cut the shit. So he turns around and looks. He says, dude, if you do that one more blank time, I'm going to punch you. And I thought he knew who I, who I really was. So he turns around again, and he starts walking away. I went, Nicole, I went up to him, and I had these weird teeth, looking teeth, and I hit him again. And he came at me like 100 miles an hour. I had to pull my teeth. I go, Joe, it's Andy, it's Andy, it's Andy. He goes, what? It's Andy. He goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. He was dead serious. He wanted to, like, he was going out of his mind. Either the ice cream machine was broken still, you didn't get ice cream, or there was no more bacon, or the merchandise store was out of something he wanted. <laughs> Because he was serious. He was, and uh, Dan from, um, Dan Grinchu from uh, um, Canada was there, and he was right in the middle of all the action. I wish somebody had a video camera. I love you, Joe. He, he came in, and I said, he goes, I got to go, though. I got to go. And he saw us like 15 minutes. He came over and gave me a big hug, and he was like so embarrassed and stuff. I said, Joe, it's all good. I've been hearing that people didn't even recognize me. But, I mean, it was classic, though. I wish I had a video. I wish I could get a video from the cameras from the ship because... His uh, buddy was like, hey, man, there's going to be an ass clown beating here any second. And I was like, he, I, I really didn't realize how many people didn't recognize me creeping around without Kim hanging, you know, because Kim was against the wall waiting for the ball. Because I went, like, to the Paul Stanley thing dressed up like that, walking around through the crowd. People were like, who the hell is that weirdo? <laughs> I love it, though. But okay. you, you got well, to have a part two if you've got to cut this off. Because yeah. 
I, okay. I, I'm going to have to cut this off, but uh, I, I do want to ask you, because you've been on so many of them, where does this rank? Where does Kiss Crew oh. 7 rank for you? It, it ranks it ranks pretty high because uh, number one you know the you know proposed to Kim so uh, it's you know that was always good. <laughs> You're not uh, gonna beat that over. Uh, no, but I mean technically it wasn't on the cruise, but it was before the cruise. But anyways, I loved it because of the Bob and Bruce thing, you know the Kiss thing with the shows. I always love the shows because they always gotta play something. I mean it's not gonna be the full deep cut thing, but at least I hear some stuff I've never heard before or barely played. So I mean. I mean, the atmosphere was good. It was very mellow. It wasn't like you're pushing and shoving and stuff. You could get the drink cups easy. Uh, the merchandise is pre-sale. Uh, the casino thing, chips weren't bad to get. Uh, people are nice. I always love seeing the people that I can't see, like, in a year. So it's like a reunion kind of thing at the same time. And um, to me, it, it, you know, the Gene did the vault thing. Like I said, we haven't talked about the vault. Talked about the vault, you know, so he played some songs. Man, it's... If they played an A song that Gene wrote, man, I have no idea why that song wasn't on a Kiss album. I was, I hope somebody recorded because if you recorded and heard that song that Gene wrote and it ace the man that he wanted to sing by Gene, Gene said he wanted this song. Off the hook. I mean, seriously, that song that A sang that Gene wrote should have been on a Kiss album, point blank. And I bet you it was like Psycho Circus. And I'm seriously, great freaking tune when I forget the name. But there was a lot of good songs that Gene, like I said, if we got to go on a part two about Paul stuff and talking to him, joking around about his old and then Tommy thing and then the Eric thing. I mean, I'm seriously, I had a great, great time. We're going back. There's no doubt about it. We didn't even hesitate. We're going back point blank and then moving back to cruise to Miami. And also, uh, if anybody, just a fast note, I uh, released, uh, believe it or not, I'm already at it. We're already at it. Joe and I are at about a party. Uh, everybody thinks that we, I might, you know, uh, I've done it in Miami at the Holiday Inn. I'm about 100% sure we're going to do it at the Holiday Inn because it's basically a small place. We are looking into something different. If it's not, it's going to go back to the Holiday Inn. And also, if uh, anybody uh, interested, just to, I know I'm going to do my G-Simmons thing, is that I did release uh, today because the Holiday Inn wanted me to do it because I uh, blocked off a lot of rooms for the Holiday Inn for the 27th, 28th, 29th, the 30th, and the 5th. And, it's, and I'm telling you, it's... Uh, one king for 189 and 179 for a double. And I'm telling you, if you look the week before, the prices are running from $254 to $284 per night. There must be something going on already down in Miami. And Miami's expensive anyway. So if anybody wants to check it out, uh, go to the, it's like I wrote Kiss Cruise uh, 8, uh, the, um, you know, Holiday Inns thing. You can look it up. Or if you really can't find anything, I can do it. Because I released the rooms this morning. I don't know how many are left, but they're going to keep trying to add on as much as they can. So if you're going or you're thinking of going, I would definitely, because it's right there, the bay, right there across the street from bay, bay side, where all the action happens. So hey, if you want to check into a hotel, because they are wicked expensive. And I would look now, even if you don't want to stay tall in, I start looking now for a hotel. So something must be going on because the hotel rates are outrageous already. So anyways, that's that. <laughs> well, you know, my I, his plug. <laughs> you know, I hate to stop you in mid-flow, but, know. you know, what, what a great, you know, in-depth dive into certain aspects of the cruise from someone who was there you know so yeah. for all of us who've been sitting around wondering what it was like holy shit your excitement is infective yeah, oh absolutely. i hope so i love it it's so awesome and i hope i'm I finally chilling you gotta get on the cruise you gotta come down to the party early and set it up we need a faq thing you guys gotta broadcast live like joe polio does you know and uh, I invite, like we say, we invite everybody to the parties and everything else, and somebody's got a show, and if we set something up, if you want to come down, I brought it, you know. Yeah, if, if, if I'm able to do cru uh, Kiss Cruise 8, I'm going to do it. And yeah, if bring you, it on. If, if you love a party, it. I'll happily be there, you know, because I'm all for that. Whatever you want. It's, it's all it's about. It's about getting the fans together, and Absolutely. the people higher up in the Kiss Camp know that this goes on. They know what I do. Believe me, they watch. They know what's going on, and they have no problem with me doing it because we're doing it for the right reasons. We do it just to have fun, get people down. I'm not made, we're not there to make a ton of money. I don't make a dime, actually. So we're just here to have fun, and that's all it is. Just get Kiss fans together from all over the world. Throw your, throw your, get rid of your you know, politics, whatever's going on with the world. This is the getaway. This is this is the getaway, period, point blank. And you can't leave without a smile. If you don't leave without a smile, and and no voice, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got no voice, so let's wrap this one up. Andy, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, thank you again. Uh, it's awesome. You, you know, let's get <laughs> let's get you back on the show again, and we'll uh, we'll wrap up this one. Your your recollections of everything that we didn't get to cover today, but you know, there's the nuts and bolts, everyone, of uh, what went down at the gathering on the cruise from uh, you know a great guy. You know, again, congratulations to you and Kim, and also congratulations to you and Joe for pulling off a gathering because. 
that sounded like a blast. And, you know, if you do something in Miami and I'm there, I'll be there without a yeah, doubt. Yeah, like I said, we don't know if it's going to be big or small. So we're just kind of, believe it or not, people are actually working on it already. So, and it's, it's you know, usually it's not doing it in January but, or so, but yeah, we're already, I'm already at it. <laughs> All right, so let's wrap that. Uh, thanks for listening to us. From Andy and myself, we will see you again on a podcast somewhere. Thank sometime. you for spending time listening to the Kiss FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the Kiss FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.